Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the unnamed fragrance from Byredo. And this, in all honesty, is my favorite fragrance from Byredo. So, if you'd like to know what I think about this fragrance, obviously, I love it. But if you'd like to know the note breakdown and why I love it so much, then keep watching. Now, first things first, this fragrance, how it came into my collection, is a way that some of my favorite fragrances have come into my collection. And when I used to live down south, I used to go to the Neiman Marcus Galleria Mall, and my favorite essay there, Larry, we had this fun kind of relationship where there would be a lot of things that would be returned and we would, I would buy them and we would try them on the spot because we were both so interested. It's how I caught Kingdom of Bahrain from Raja. If you guys don't know, that one is incredible. And he was a huge fan of Byredo, and this was sitting there for probably a month at his counter. And one day I finally decided to just buy it so that we could smell it. So that is how I came to own the unnamed fragrance from Byredo. And when I tried it, I was so impressed. Now I did research the notes after I purchased it, and I was kind of had an idea of how it would smell, but on the skin, it just comes alive. So. Uh, the notes in this specific fragrance are gin, pink pepper, orris root, violet, tree moss, and uh, fir balsam. There you go. I can say words sometimes. Not all the times, but sometimes. The real winner of this show to me is the violet. This is very much like on my skin, on Larry's skin, on other people I've smelled this. This is a very violet dense scent, but it's not like like the whimsical, sweet, floral, kind of like sugared violet. It has a depth to it, it has an inkiness to it, it has substance to it, and that's what I love about it. I love the, I love moss in fragrances. It is a note that I seek out. I love how it's slightly bitter, how it's green, how it's vegetal just how like dark and damp it can be. And for me, uh, moss can really change a fragrance and kind of elevate a fragrance. And I also really like boozy notes and scents. And I think the gin is a great, great choice. You definitely kind of get that slightly tangy, tannic, like bitterness from the gin. And also the pink pepper too. Pink pepper, I've talked about this before in other videos. It's a very aromatic spice, but it's a little fruity. And if you've ever had pink peppercorn before, it's slightly fruity. Not that it is fruity or it smells like a fruit, but it just kind of lends itself really well to aromatic fragrances and very aromatic florals like iris and violet. So when I saw the notes of this, I was really excited, but for me, it was about how it was balanced and blended. And I think because specifically on my skin, the violet is so predominant, it kind of gives it a, all the other notes a playing field to really be spectacular, but not overpower one another. The fact that the violet's kind of overpowering everything else is not in a negative way. What it kind of does is it adds like a blanket to smooth everything out while still having that unique, beautiful floral characteristic of a violet. But at the same time, it's very unisex. It has a heft, it has a weight to it. It doesn't smell, smell like flowery sugar. It definitely has substance to it. And that's what really drew me to the scent. Now, do not get me wrong. I do love me some really flowery sugary violet fragrances so I am not blasting those at all but I love to see fragrance houses and noses and people just really kind of go off and kind of explore different ways that these notes can smell rather than the stereotypical this is how this flower smells this is how this wood smells like really kind of playing with it and having fun and being creative and that's what this fragrance is. This is a very unique, creative take on a violet fragrance, but it's still also very familiar and wearable. So this is a scent that I think if you're somebody out there and you're looking for a unisex, almost more masculine, like iris or violet scent, I think you would love this. And again, that's thanks to them, specifically the moss, but also the gin and the pink pepper. It just comes across really beautifully and it's not powdery in every way. It's green and vibrant and bright, but also kind of inky and dark and vegetal and violet. And there's just something about it that I love. There is an underlying sweetness to it too, but it's not 
a sweet scent, but you do get a little tiny bit of sweetness, which again, I think balances out the aromatic qualities of everything else, the green and stuff, um, the green from the moss and the fir balsam and all that stuff. And it just kind of, again, balances and blends everything perfectly into where you get the beauty of each of these notes, while at the same time having something unique and wearable. I love this scent and I do love Byredo. In the past, they've taken some real risks with things. Some things have been out of the ballpark. People have been absolutely in love with it. And other things people are like, oh, why would you wear that? But overall, I think this unnamed fragrance from Byredo is a real beauty. Now, if you guys don't know, fragrance is genderless. Anyone can wear whatever they want, but the composition of this scent is definitively unisex. It does have a lot of qualities that you would find in masculine scents. Think the moss and the gin, those kind of more aromatic qualities of the top notes. And then you have those florals, which you might find in a lot of feminine fragrances, but it plays on the skin really beautifully and it smells really sexy and attractive too. So men or women can wear this. I definitely think this fragrance is appropriate for um, evening if you wanted to wear something a little bit more casually, or if you wanted to wear something for the day, you could definitely go like that. It's very versatile. And I also think this would be very appropriate for personal, uh, not personal, although yes, personal, professional, there you go, professional settings as well. So it's a great scent to have in your collection if you're looking for something very aromatic, uh, very floral, but still very unisex, leaning a little on the masculine side. It is fan freaking tastic For projection and longevity, this scent is pretty good, actually. I get about six to eight hours on my skin the first few hours. It is very aromatic, has a very nice projection and sillage, I'd say about moderate. And then the last hour or two, it's very intimate, but that's pretty normal for scents. In any case, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you didn't know, obviously, I said in the beginning of the video that I purchased this, but this was not sent to me to review. I bought this, I love it, and I would absolutely repurchase it if I was um, empty, when I got empty. I love it. So yeah, it definitely is a repurchasable scent. And if I ever thought they were discontinuing this, I know with this particular scent, it was weird. They had it, they didn't have it, they re-released it. I would buy back out of back up of this, no problem. Like wouldn't even think about it. It is just that good. In any case, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.